Welcome to Republican Roundtable. I'm your host, Max Reimer. If you've been a viewer of our show, you know that every once in a while we stick our hands in nonpartisan races and offices that don't necessarily have our Republican affiliation or the DFL affiliation attached to them. Lately, we've seen a lot of news about the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office and that race, which will be decided in November of 2022. Today, we have in studio with us my good friend and independent candidate for Hennepin County Sheriff, Jai Hansen. Max, thanks for having me. Jai, thank you for joining yeah, us absolutely. on the Republican Roundtable. So you are running for Sheriff, Jai. I am. Yeah. Tell me about your background, yourself, and what made you crazy enough to do this. Well, a little bit about me. I grew up in Minneapolis. I grew up on the, on the south side of Minneapolis and uh, went to school there. And um, I never really wanted to be a police officer until I got to college and I was in Chicago. Okay. And I saw what was going on in Chicago as far as the crime and how it really can destroy a community. And that's when I decided I wanted to be a part of the solution. And I changed my major uh, and uh, decided to go into law enforcement. And first off, I, I, I got my major in communications because it was a little easier than business finance. <laughs> uh, and it was going to benefit me more for law enforcement. So I got into law enforcement, went up to Alexandria Tech, got my law enforcement certificate, uh, came back down. I've been a police officer in the cities here with two different agencies, Lakeville and then now Bloomington. I've been a police officer for 15 years. I have a master's in public safety administration from the University of St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And for me, getting into this race is because, uh, you know, like a lot of people, uh, Minneapolis and, the, and Hennepin County in our state is ground zero for uh, police reform, especially after what happened to George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And that motivated me to get involved. And um, I just saw that there is a lack of leadership and the leadership we need is is leadership especially for this office being nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. we need an independent sheriff that doesn't get bogged down by a political party and answers to a political party we need a sheriff that answers to the people and that's why i'm running what are some of the major issues you mentioned obviously we are ground zero minneapolis was ground zero the world was watching as lawlessness consumed that city and continues to consume beyond that city, the western suburbs. Basically, there's not a place in Minnesota you can throw a dart at, and there's less crime than there was before. What are specific things that you are hoping to bring to that office to, to change the culture and, and hopefully stymie some of that lawless attitude? Yeah, well, first off, May 26, 2020, we knew we were going to have an issue with crime. We knew we were going to have an issue with law enforcement. Uh, for the first time, we're seeing people leaving this profession at a very young age. And uh, and the crime has just continued to grow with nobody keeping it in check. And, and what I want to bring to that office is uh, leadership uh, that leads by example, number one, and number two, that will, will have a vocal uh, uh, voice as far as what we need to do to get things done. I mean, we, we look at right now, we have a revolving a revolving door in the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. people going in and out of jail. And uh, we need to have a sheriff that will be vocal and say, we need to hold our prosecutors accountable, we need to hold our judges accountable. And that's what I intend to do. So leadership is a huge uh, priority for me. And uh, public safety, I mean, we if, does it make our county safer or not make it safer? And that's what I uh, want to install again. Now, your, uh, your current opponent, at least the one who is the incumbent and declared, is Sheriff Hutchinson. There was some controversy with him. He, he rolled his, his state-issued vehicle. It turned out that he had alcohol in his system at a pretty significant level. And you come to find that there's all sorts of things that he may have been doing as sheriff that are uncouth and we I don't even think we know the full story but you and I talked before the program and there there had been problems prior to that significant event where where Jai do you see Sheriff Hutchinson missing the mark in terms of being a sheriff of Hennepin County well I think with that with the crash uh, as a citizen of Hennepin County a resident of Hennepin County and also a police officer I'm very disappointed and embarrassed about the crash but I, I will say this, it, it, it also, uh, 
is an example of his judgment, but the reason why I'm running is everything that happened before that crash. Uh, how the, the riot and the civil unrest was handled in the city and just, just uh, the example that that's set of the lawlessness. And as the sheriff, you don't answer t to an elected body. You don't answer to a mayor or a council, uh, city council. You answer to the citizens. Mm -hmm. And yes, of course, uh, the county commissioners do your budget, but you answer to the citizens. So what I have handled, what happened after uh, the George Floyd um, incident, differently absolutely you don't let a, a community burn to the ground right it seemed like during those moments from the governor all the way on down to the mayor to sheriff hutchinson we had we had no one for two days using a bully pulpit to stand up and say this is wrong uh, did you see that or am i missing something where was I'm sorry, not to rant on this thing, but where was a guy like Sheriff Hutchinson during that? Right. The The leadership, to me, was just mind-blowing, right? For, for, you know, I understand you have a governor, you have a mayor, you have a council, uh, all part of the same party. So, so they're doing whatever they're going to do. But as a sheriff, and he's a part of that party as well, but right. that's why you need to be nonpartisan where you can say, hey, this is not right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you, let's talk about the third precinct for a second. The third precinct, that was given up. That wasn't, the, it wasn't overtaken. The mm -hmm. police weren't run out of there. It was a calculated decision by our elected leaders to give up the third precinct. Mm -hmm. And since that happened, now you see it happen in Portland. Now you see it happen in Seattle. And that's kind of been the game plan. And, and for me, you know, I talk a lot about we need to make sure things like this don't happen. But I, I do it because I talk about the trauma of it all mm -hmm. and why that building is still standing to this day. Uh, and, and people in that community trying to move on or trying to, trying to heal, uh, you can't with that trauma. I mean, you had other businesses, AutoZones, Rebuild, Target, Cub, they're all rebuilt. But then you have that still standing, boarded up, barricades, barbed wire around it. Mm -hmm. That needs to be taken down. Right, right, because it, it's almost a monument to failure. Yeah, it's a trophy. Failure. Yeah. yeah, it's a trophy. Well, that's jarring. And obviously, as Hennepin County Sheriff, your job extends beyond Minneapolis. I've noticed a pretty severe increase in carjackings that are happening, happening in Bloomington and Edina and Maple Grove. It's like there's this kind of blast radius that has happened from Minneapolis. And I think big part of it, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree, is because we don't vocally have the backs of our cops and we don't let them do their job. Would you say that's just part of your job is to say, you guys are cops and I trust you to do your job? Or how do you, how do you encourage them, you know? Well, being a police officer for 15 years, I can tell you I have worked with some really great police officers. And those are the officers that I want to continue to champion for as, as I get uh, into a, a position like Hennepin County Sheriff. Uh, we need to champion for the great officers. We need to hold the bad ones accountable. Mm -hmm. Nobody dislikes a bad cop more than a good cop. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what, I, what we need to do is we need to champion for the good cops because for the first time in my career, I'm seeing officers with five or six years on leaving. And these are family decisions that it, it, they're just walking away mm -hmm. and we need to stop that we need we need to we need to make sure they feel uh welcomed by by you know the elected leaders right so shifting gears a little bit i remember reading this story a, a while ago about the treatment of people that were kept in hennepin county facilities and i know that you had some social media content around that what kind of oversight is there, you know, for the way people are treated while in confinement? Because I think the story that I read about was was this mom who was abused. Am I am I getting that right? Yeah, I think what you're referring to is the mom that was arrested and um, shackled, and she was pregnant, and she went into labor. Mm -hmm. And I want to be very clear about something: the 
the detention deputies at Hennepin County are really good employees. I mean, it, uh, I know a handful of them, and and um, I would be proud to work with them. Um, but this goes to a leadership, and this goes directly to the top. And, and my concern is when you have a sheriff that talks about transparency, whether it's, it's um, you know, a situation in the jail or whether it's uh, rolling your, your county vehicle, there's no transparency. Mm -hmm. What I would do, as horrific as that uh, incident in the jail was, I think you have a, a obligation to the people to explain why that happened or your side of it. Now I know you can't get into certain things because of litigation, right? Mm -hmm. But I think you need to be able to answer as to uh, as to whatever you can that doesn't encroach on uh, legal issues. Right. It seems like there's almost two treads of failure here. One is not having the backs and supporting our police and that encouraging lawlessness. But then, Jai, you see, you see kind of this virtue signaling about reform, and yet horrific things like that are allowed to happen. And I am curious. It seems like before the car situation, that office and Hennepin County in general seems to be a layer of government where there is not a lot of transparency, where there is not a lot of accountability. Uh, you know, how do you plan to kind of reinstate that? You know, I, I think I've heard you mention before about the budget, the Hennepin County budget, and how big the budget is, especially with the sheriff's office. It's just a shy under $130 million a year. Uh, and um, with a budget of that size, you really need to have transparency as far as what, what, what where that money is going. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes to reform, Cops understand we need reform. We're we're okay with reform. You know, this is a this is a profession that we need to uh, get with the times. Mm -hmm. But I don't want mm -hmm. it to be knee jerk reform. I want it to be sustainable reform that has a lasting impact. Uh, the current sheriff, for example, uh, doesn't have a seat at the table when it comes to the Capitol. We, they just had a, a public safety senate hearing a few months ago. And you had two sheriffs uh, from Ramsey County and Chisago County talking mm -hmm. about the crime in Hennepin County. Wow. And, and the Hennepin County Sheriff does not have a seat at that table. We need to have a vocal leader uh, that can advocate for the citizens of Hennepin County mm -hmm. and say, this is what we're dealing with carjacking. This is where it's going in the suburbs. This is what's happening in Minneapolis. And we need to, we need to get help from our elected officials. Yeah. And when we're talking about the judges and the whole criminal justice apparatus, we are talking about, in some cases, violent criminals being let back onto the street, and it's a major problem, and I think it puts stress on our police officers. But, Jai, what I'm wondering is, like, how do we also then keep in mind with, like, petty crimes and marijuana possession and things of that nature? I mean, how do you, how do you balance that to say, we're not going to ruin a kid's life, you know, who made a mistake, versus letting people back out onto the street too early. There is a fine balance there, right? And I think what we have to do is we need to look at it as a whole, whether that's, you know, a 12-year-old to a 14-year-old. Uh, we have to see what they're getting involved in and see if there's diversion programs we can get them um, set up with that will keep them out of a legal system for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a 14-year-old or 15-year-old that is doing carjackings, those are violent crime that puts trauma on citizens throughout our county, and that is not acceptable. So when, when there is a carjacking or another, you know, robbery or, uh, you know, holding a gun to somebody's head, uh, th those are crimes that we need to address right now. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I would be focused on. Um, as, as you're running, Jai, and I think, it's, I think it's good for our audience to see you're a cop, you've been a dedicated cop in multiple communities, even the one that we film in right now here in Bloomington. 
with the George Floyd backdrop, with the exploding crime, with communities all over the place asking what is going on and what is happening. You know, you are a black guy who's a cop. Mm -hmm. What is that experience like right now in 2022? Well, for me, I think, you know, I, I kind of joke that I haven't been uh, called a racist this many times since, uh, you know, joining Twitter. Sure. <laughs> but I, I think... I yeah, think, welcome to the jungle, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, I look at, I look at people's stories and, and what, they're, what they're dealing with. Me, I've been a patrol officer for a long time, going to people's houses at 2 o'clock in the morning or or uh, going to a domestic or helping people in, in their time of need, to me, is something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I think when, when somebody uh, sees an officer that maybe come into their house and, and they can relate with them a little bit and shows that, you know, cops are human too, that's a huge uh, component we need. Mm -hmm. And I'm all for diversity. I'm all for, for uh, getting recruiting and uh, and people that reflect the community but we need to have the best cops mm -hmm. that we can have and that's another thing we, we touched on youth I want to I want to target youth at a young age and show them that this is a profession that would be something that is is uh, a noble profession mm -hmm. that's something that they could get into and it could serve their family and themselves very well mm -hmm. Yeah, and with we talked about transparency, we talked about accountability, and it does seem with Hutchinson that every every kind of flagship event that happens in Hennepin County, he really just has n nothing to say. I wanted to get your opinion with this Kim Potter verdict coming down. Um, the world was again watching this trial, Jai, and I just want to get your take on that because in my eyes, tragedy you know the whole situation was a tragedy but it seems to me that she she made a mistake um well how, how would you deal with a situation like that even just from a pr perspective because mm -hmm. that is hennepin county as well well this is where i'm not a pol politician and this is where i'll give you a straight answer i i feel horrible uh for her and her family the day that that happened uh, the people I was with, I said, two families' lives have changed forever. Mm -hmm. uh, Dante Wright's and hers, and it was a it was a horrible, horrible mistake. Uh, do I uh, accept the the decision by the jury? Yes, I do. Uh, do I agree with it? No, I don't. And one concern that I have as a police officer is you have the state of Minnesota, the Attorney General, Keith Ellison, <laughs> having somebody take the stand that's an expert witness that essentially says uh, the officer should have let Dante Wright go. And there's a court document, legal document, that says that the police officers have to arrest on that. Mm -hmm. So what I want is a clarification from the Attorney General and a clarification from the Minnesota Supreme Court as far as guidance for officers if they're in that situation again what should they do mm -hmm. should they arrest which is the law or what would the Attorney General like us to do in that situation moving forward right right because in every other aspect it seems of a police uh, of, of the job of a policeman or a policewoman is it does seem like the rules are out the window for a lot of this stuff. Even it's, it sounds like training mechanisms are changing so rapidly. And mm -hmm. I think you're right, reform is a good thing, but we also need to make sure that we're honoring the craft of being a law enforcement officer. Yeah, and it comes back to the law. The state of Minnesota had an expert witness that said you don't have to arrest on that. Hmm. And it wasn't corrected. Yeah. So, so we need clarification. Absolutely. You open the door, you're not a politician, but you're running for a political office. I'm always fascinated by Hennepin County mm -hmm. races because Hennepin County is a beast. It's a big, burly entity. You were right. I think the Hennepin County budget in totality is bigger than 14 states. I think that's, uh, yeah, that, those are the most recent numbers that I know of, which is incredible. And as you run for a countywide office, you're talking about basically 
more than a congressional district. You're going to have to win more voters than a congressperson is, will, will have to win. I'm interested, Jai, just because there's such a dynamic between Minneapolis and the rest of Hennepin County, culturally, the way that law enforcement works and operates, and uh, you know, how do you how do you run for an office like this? How do you talk to everybody? You know, when it comes to public safety, your message doesn't need to change. Uh, whether I'm talking in in YZ or North Minneapolis, people deserve to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And, and that's my message, and, and I'm very comfortable with that. I, I don't need to change who I am depending on what part of the county I'm in. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm running because people need to feel safe. They deserve to feel safe. And we can do a lot better job at this. And the, the sheriff's office can have oversight and help in how we manage this, right? Uh, you have Minneapolis that are, are drastically no, low numbers in police officers, mm -hmm. and they're they they're under review right now with the Department of Justice, and we'll see what happens. They're about to have a new police chief, so what the sheriff's office can do, they can they can assist. And I'm not talking about taking Minneapolis 911 calls, mm -hmm. but what I am doing is we need to have targeted uh, units that can address the violent crime. So it's not going out to Plymouth, like we've seen, or Edina, or Eden Prairie, or Wyzetta, this this has to be a county issue. Not only a county issue, a state issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we need our, our cities to succeed if we want our state to succeed. Amen. And we talked earlier about some of the issues that you're running on, Jai, is you are traveling Hennepin County. And again, you're talking about a multitude of communities. Are there are there any issues you hear from people that have surprised you or that have um, kind of invigorated you to make that part of your campaign? I think what, I, what I'm proud about is that the more people I run into, they're happy that I'm running as an independent. Mm. Um, and it doesn't matter. I've been in rooms that are very conservative rooms, and I've been in rooms that are very liberal, and, and they've come up and they're happy that I'm running as an independent because I think after I'm done speaking they do understand what is important to me and that's making sure they're safe and getting this thing turned around and um, and I have people on both sides of the aisle on my team mm -hmm. and I'm proud of that but I, I think also just the stories uh, if your life has changed at all because of this crime, yeah. it's time to do something. Mm -hmm. So if you thought, well, maybe I might take a walk around Lake Nokomis or I might go to a ball game downtown and you hesitate and you say it might not be safe, it's time to get involved. Yeah. And that's why you know I'm involved now and that's why I want to fix this. Mm -hmm. um, that is, I yeah, I think the independent thing, and you know, it is really interesting because this is a Republican program and when did we ever think it was a good idea to have a party endorsement process for an office like this? I think you could probably make the same case for Hennepin County Prosecutor, right, mm -hmm. as right. well, um, which seems to be probably more blatantly partisan mm -hmm. than even yours is. Yeah, when people call 911, we don't ask if you're a Republican or a Democrat, yeah. right? We, you, know, you don't ask we, if you're vaccinated either yet, right? We don't <laughs> ask that. And, and it's one of those things that it needs to get back to those days where it's, does it make you safer or not? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I look at certain areas, North Minneapolis, I feel North Minneapolis has been abandoned by our politicians. They, they come around every four years, and if we can't figure out what's going on there, this is going to continue to spread through our county and our state. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, day one for me, I would, I would be moving my office to the north side. Wow. Where's that currently? Right now it's downtown Minneapolis like at downtown. City Hall. Got yeah, it. but I think, I think you need to have a presence there and then start building out more. Okay. Wow. That would be... A monumental change, I would imagine. Talking about the race itself, again, putting my political hat back on. Big district. How do you, you know, how do you tackle a beast like this, Jai? How do you touch voters of all kinds between now and November, knowing that Hennepin County is so big? How do you run in this campaign? 
I think our message is resonating with a lot of people, regardless of where you are or your age or, or your race. Uh, and that's the kind of uh, campaign I want to run. I, I think we have a, a team that understands that, that are from both sides of the aisle. And, and we, we just focus on the people. This really is about the people. And I don't want to get bogged down with the politics side of it. I know there's some politics that go into it. Mm -hmm. But if we put people first, I'm going to be very proud of this campaign. And at the end of the day, I want to be able to look in the mirror and be proud of what we did. Mm -hmm. and, and as we continue to do that, regardless of who I'm running against, uh, I think people are joining, and I, I'm, I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. So, knowing you have a you have a primary that will happen in August, are there any other benchmarks that we should know about with the campaign? Any kind of flagship, you know, times that we should be aware of? So the primary is is key uh, for for this race because uh, the top two vote getters go on to the general, mm -hmm. and um, so that, like you said, that's in that's in August, and uh, we'll be out and about. I'm very, uh, uh, you know accessible, I guess, you know, whether you call or, or you email, you know, I want to be able to talk to as many people as I can. And that's what has motivated me and continued to get me excited about this is hearing people's stories. Some of them, you know, are very tough stories to hear, but that's the motivation you need to do. This isn't about fear mongering. This is about helping and figuring out right. how we need to do this. So uh, August is a big one. Mm -hmm. And then into the November election. Exactly. Which it'll be this year, 2022. 22, That's when it's happening. Yeah. Jai, with the last couple of minutes here, how can people get to know you better and help out your campaign if they're so interested? Uh, so social media, um, my social media accounts are Jai for Sheriff. So it's J-A-I and the number four and then Sheriff. Mm -hmm. And um, that's also uh, my website, Jai for Sheriff. And... Uh, Please go there, uh, sign up uh, for emails or, or whatever you can do to help us. And if you have any questions for me, uh, send me an email or, or give me a call. I would be happy to talk to you and hear what your concerns are. Jai Hansen, thank you so much for joining the Republican Roundtable. Yeah, appreciate Good luck. It. Yeah, thank you. This has been the Republican Roundtable. I'm your host, Max Reimer. Until next time.